Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to polish carbon fiber. I've already started washing this Evo because we're gonna go ahead and show you how to polish the awesome carbon fiber material. A lot of newer cars today like Mitsubishi's, Porsche's, high-end sports cars like Lamborghinis and Ferraris are coming with exposed carbon fiber and they need to be taken care of. I'm already using EcoSmart to wash the vehicle to prep it. So we have our EcoSmart RU and we're getting a lot of dirt off this vehicle but we're prepping it to be washed, okay? After we prep it with the wash, we're gonna go ahead and use the clay bar and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to polish carbon fiber. So if you have a car with exposed carbon fiber like a Porsche or a BMW that have a carbon fiber roof, this is the perfect lesson to show you how to detail using the new roofs polisher and the V-line of polishes. So I've already washed the surface right now using our uh, EcoSmart RU and a microfiber towel and I've pulled off all the dirt and now we got a fresh surface. Uh, we didn't have to use water for this, we chose to use waterless because it's safer and we don't have to drag out any buckets or hoses. So we took our towel and you see all the dirt that we've taken just off the door. This car is a daily driver so we're taking off a lot of dirt and a lot of road grime that's seen in Los Angeles. So now let's get started polishing. So right here on this cart, I've laid out everything we need to start polishing. All the good stuff that we're going to use today to polish out this carbon fiber door. So the first thing we're going to be using is we're going to use our EcoSmart to wash the surface with our premium green uh, workhorse microfiber towels. We've already gone ahead and washed it. Next we're going to go ahead and clay the door using our blue um, super fine clay which is going to go ahead and remove any contamination like overspray or rail dust or brake dust that's stuck on the paint. We're going to use our Luber with the clay bar to make sure that we get a nice smooth surface. Now our Luber is our super slick clay block and clay bar super lubricant, which works on glass, paint, wheels, anywhere you're gonna use the clay bar. We're also gonna be using the Roops LHR 15 ES Bigfoot Random Orbital Polisher. Now this is the smaller version. There's an LHR 21 ES, which is a 21 throw, but this is the LHR 15 ES with a smaller 15 millimeter throw and five inch backing plate, which is gonna give me more precision when I'm polishing on these small body lines on this carbon fiber door. To polish the carbon fiber, we're gonna be using a white Hexlogic polishing pad, the perfect pad for this, and we're gonna be using our V36 optical grade cutting polish to refine the paintwork. Right at the end, we're gonna go ahead and use our Jet Seal 109 to seal up the paintwork to make sure we got the ultimate protection on carbon fiber. I also got a little bucket here to sit down to make sure I'm comfortable when I'm detailing. When you're detailing on any surface, the main thing is to be comfortable. Whether you're sitting or on your knees or on your feet, make sure you're wearing comfortable shoes or got a nice seat. So let's go ahead and grab the LHR 15 ES and polish out this carbon fiber door. So I go on ahead and grab the piece of our ultra fine blue clay bar. Now when you have a clay bar, you wanna make sure that you first roll it into a ball, and then you need to go ahead and spread it out into a nice little disc. And when it's in, once it's in the disc, you have a nice grab and, and texture holding of the clay. I'm also gonna use our clay bar and clay luber, and that's gonna give me a good lubricant as we go ahead and clay the surface. So I'm gonna turn my sprayer on. Here we go, let's start claying. Now this paint has a rough feel to it. I don't know if you can hear that. It feels really rough. We're gonna go ahead and spray it down. Now this carbon fiber has a clear coat to it and I think this just has overspray or contamination on it uh, but it really feels bad. It's making the carbon fiber not look as shiny so it's good that we take off all that type of contamination nasty stuff. Clay bars are really easy to use. We sell three different kinds here at Chemical Guys. We sell a heavy duty, we sell a medium, and we also sell a light. Now I like using the light on cars uh, because we're starting to pull off some contamination and oftentimes you either only need the medium or the light. You really don't need the heavy duty that often. Uh, professionals, if you're a professional out there that's doing this every day for a living, you may need the heavy duty because the heavy duty can help you uh, clean a lot of heavy stuff. Like if a car hasn't been clayed for 25, 30 years, you might need that. Okay. Um, but if you're uh, an everyday guy at home uh, just detailing his daily driver uh, or his weekend car, you don't need the heavy duty. So I recommend to purchase the light or if you need something a little bit more abrasive, then purchase the medium. That's the best one to do, okay? Now I'm making my way down the door. If you notice, I started from the top. I started from the top to be more efficient with my product because if you notice when I spray it on the surface, product drips down. So if we start from the top, 
our product's working down and I'm still able to clay other parts of the car lower down the surface and not waste any product. If I started from the bottom, uh, I would have to deal with using too much product. So save more money, uh, use the product more efficiently, you'll get better results. Also, the bottom of the door is often the dirtiest. This is kicked up from road grime and contamination from the floor. So you always want to make sure that you clay from the top down. We also have other alternatives besides the clay bar, like the clay block or the clay mitt. Uh, my personal preference is just the clay bar. I like the clay bar. It gives me a, a, good, uh, a good material to grab onto and it glides over the surface really easy, these premium clay bars. Now this Evo is really cool because if you notice, it's like full carbon fiber front end. Carbon fiber doors, carbon fiber side skirts, carbon fiber fender. So the whole thing is carbon fiber. You don't see this very often, but that means the whole front of the car is really lightweight. So now that I've gone ahead and clay, I'm gonna go ahead and take my clay bar and I'm gonna place it back inside the bag. Don't set your clay bar down on a cart or the ground. Always put it back in something that's uh, safe to house it. So maybe a little plastic container or a small plastic box you have lying around is perfect for that. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the bag that it came in. That's why we send it to you in a nice bag. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a microfiber towel now. I'll grab one of these super premium, super plush, 16 by 24 towels. These are one of my favorite colored towels. They are blue with a red silk lining. And I just like the size. They're great for removing things like quick detailer or clay lube. So I'm gonna dry off the clay from the, the clay lube from the surface and let's, uh, let's feel the surface. It feels a lot smoother. You don't hear any type of contamination anymore. So clay really does its thing. Clay works on windows, clay works on paint, it works on carbon fiber, fiberglass, gel coat, wheels, metalwork, exhaust. It works on everything. Uh, I've clay barred my cell phone and my computer screen. It's a great way to clean all different types of surfaces. So you can also clean, clay your uh, television screen if you're looking to uh, clean it up a little bit or detail other products. Chemical Guys products work on a variety of uh, materials. There we go, let's do the bottom down here. We're not gonna go at it. We didn't clay the side skirt uh, because the side skirt is actually um, not our main concern today. Our main concern today is polishing this door. There we go. Now we improved some gloss. We got a nice smooth feel, but it's time to polish it out. Now this door actually has a clear coat on the door. The owner had the whole car repainted. And if you notice the rest of the car is actually a matte orange color. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and polish this clear coat right here because you can't polish the matte paint. The matte paint is, is a, a texturized feel. It's designed to not be shiny at all. So we can't polish this but we want our door to be real shiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and polish the door and the rest of the car. I'm gonna use the meticulous matte detail line, which is gonna help clean, maintain, and add protection using spray sealant. So now that we're done with our clay lube, I'm gonna go ahead and hang my tools back on the cart. I like to stay organized on my cart when I'm detailing to make sure that I'm all good. So now I grab my Roops LHR 15 ES, the Bigfoot model. I'm gonna go ahead and polish up the door to make sure it looks fantastic. So I'm gonna grab a white Hex Logic pad. This is one of our Chemical Guys Hex Logic polishing pads. White, designed to use with a swirl remover or a finishing polish to give a nice smooth look. We're gonna team it with our Bigfoot LHR 15 ES polisher. Uh, this is a big random orbital polisher. It's designed for pros and enthusiasts. It's a very high quality machine built in Italy, so you know that you get a quality item. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and place the Hexlogic pad right on the center of this five inch backing plate and now we are ready to go. Our machine's all ready. So now I'm going to take V36, I'm gonna shake it up, and I'm going to place three small or five small dots on my pad. Now you can use water or a quick detail spray to lube your pad, I'm gonna use Luber. Luber is great for that, or pad conditioner. We just want a nice little moisture coating to go ahead and get started today. Water works great as well too. But if you have quick detail spray or Luber around, that's also good. So we'll start polishing this top section first. I'm gonna first go ahead and spread out the polish on speed setting one.
Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and bump my machine up to speed setting six and we're gonna go ahead and polish it out. There we go, we've gone ahead and made a pass. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a brand new fresh microfiber towel. We're using these blue ones today. When you have a fresh micro, microfiber towel, always remember, rip off the tag, throw it away. Let's fold up my towel. Let's go ahead and remove any polish and look at that. We got a nice gloss enhancement, we removed any light stains. Might have been hard to see on the camera with the uh, carbon fiber weave, but before there was light stains on it and now it feels glass smooth. It was that easy. The carbon fiber, all it needs is a one step on this car, but you can also multi-step correction if you need be using V32, V34, or V38 on this vehicle. But just with this test, we've already made sure that V36 works fantastic. So the reason I chose the Bigfoot for this job is because I wanted to polish this top part off the body line. Then I'm gonna split the door down in half to polish this side and this side with the speed and efficiency of the Bigfoot. So I'm gonna get right down on the ground when I polish a door that's on the lower half. I like to just sit on the ground on my bottom because it helps me uh, get a good control of the machine on the door. So let's grab the roofs once again and let's polish it out. Just like before, V36, shake it up. Open up the top. We're gonna give five dots right to the pad. With V36, you don't use a lot of polish, you use less. If you need more polish, add some more, but don't go crazy because it's actually a diminishing abrasive, which actually means it needs to use a little bit of polish to make the best result. I use a little bit of luber just to go ahead and give my pad a little bit of lubricity. Okay, we got our five dots. Let's go ahead and spread it out. I'm gonna do a half this lower door panel in one quick swoop. Uh, with a porter cable, I'd probably have to do this in four sections, but with this machine, I can cover a lot bigger area. So if you're a pro looking to polish, this is a really good thing for you. Let's go ahead and spread out the polish. There we go. Okay, it's spread out. I'm gonna bump my machine to six. Let's start some polishing. I'm letting the machine do the work right now. I'm not forcing it, I'm going a nice smooth constant motion. I'm also turning my machine sideways so I can get down here without harming the lower portion of the side skirt. Go up and down again. Change my rotation and my movement. There we go, let's grab my towel again. Now polishing on a door, it's some exercise. You have to hold that machine up, the vibrations, it will make your arms very tired. So make sure you do stretches before you polish. Make sure you're in a good, comfortable position because even right now, just doing this, 
my arms are feeling the wear of holding the machine at a vertical level. So I'm gonna go ahead and polish and remove any type of excess polish. And now I have a nice bright finish. There we go. It's quickly and easily achievable with the Bigfoot polisher and we're getting a nice smooth feel. If it feels smooth, it looks smooth, and that means that our paint is gonna look amazing at the car show. We're getting a nice depth. It's a little bit hard to see because of the carbon fiber weave and the gloss, but from my angle, it is just fantastic, and I'm very impressed. So I'm gonna move on to the last spot down here, and then we're gonna seal up this door. We'll see you in a moment. So this is the last spot we're gonna be doing with the polishing. I'm gonna add my last five dots. And I can't stress enough that the size of your five dots is super important. Do not go bigger than these size dots. They should fit right on the hex. No, should not fill the hex. You should be able to see the hex, but a nice small dot. If, if you ever need to add more, you can always add more polish, but it's hard to take it away. So just use the right amount. You notice that the polish, that when I use it, it disappears, it turns clear. The diminishing abrasives work to their proper form. If you overuse the polish, you're not gonna get those results. So use the right amount of polish. Quick tip. We'll do two more sprays of the Luber to get us started. I'm gonna turn my machine to speed setting one. Spread it out. The reason I dot this over the paintwork is so I don't get splatter when I start. There we go. Spread it out. Okay, quick spread. Speed setting six is where we're up to. Now let's go ahead and get started. There we go. Now you notice since I used the right polish and the right amount that the polish disappeared and I'm going to go ahead and remove the very little excess that is still on there. If you're removing a lot of polish when you're polishing, you're doing something wrong. So you notice I'm barely removing anything. Really I'm only removing stuff from the edge where it's called the blend spot where you blend the two panels together uh, or the two sections of the panel that you did the polishing on. Uh, polishing is really my specialty. I love polishing. That's like my favorite part about detailing. Paint correction and using machine polishers is just a rewarding experience that produces fantastic results. And now look at that. It is a true fantastic result. Smooth, clear, looks amazing. We're going to go ahead and throw a coat of Jet Seal 109 on this to make sure it's protected. And this carbon fiber stays looking fantastic. So we're going to go grab some Jet Seal and see you in a moment. Now we gotta protect all of our hard work because when you use a machine polisher, you wanna make sure it's always protected. So we're gonna use our Jet Seal 109, the ultimate protection, designed using aerospace technology to protect this carbon fiber because carbon fiber truly comes from a high level of technological advancements. So things like aerospace, jets, Formula One, and a lot of different race teams use carbon fiber to keep their cars low and the performance high. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake up my Jet Seal. I'm gonna place three lines of Jet Seal on my applicator pad, and I'm gonna go ahead and spread it out. So I like to spread my Jet Seal out by first marking a few areas, okay? This is just so I don't have to go back and recharge my pad. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do a spread, okay? Now it might look like I put a thick amount, but no, I didn't put a thick amount. I only used three small lines, and that's gonna give me the perfect amount of protection. Let's go inside the uh, door handle, pull the door open to get in there. And we'll spread it out. With Camel Guys products, less is more, so you can do a lot of protecting with a bottle of Jet Seal 109. Since our sponge still has some on it, I'm gonna go over here and do this carbon fiber mirror. And I'm gonna do this upper part to make sure that the whole door just looks fresh and awesome. Okay, now we have to wait 20 minutes for the Jet Seal 109 did bond to the surface because it uses nanotechnology. So it bonds to the surface, goes into the pores of the paint, 
in this case clear coat, and it's gonna bond and make ultimate protection. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my equipment and we'll see you back in 20 minutes to remove the jet seal. So now we've waited 20 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and buff off the jet seal and jet seal really gives a high gloss shine. That's something I really love about jet seals. Carbon fiber is supposed to look reflective like this, unless it's dry carbon fiber, which is supposed to have a flat look, but this is a beautiful clear coated carbon fiber and you see that weave and it just looks fantastic. Carbon fiber looks really cool when it's done right. Uh, it, a lot of cars now have it from the factory so if you have like a BMW M3 or an M5 or an M6, or if you have an AMG Mercedes or a Porsche GT2 or GT3, you're gonna be able to take true advantage of this polishing method that I showed you in this video. And you're gonna be able to take the biggest advantage of Jet Seal 109, which is gonna make sure that your carbon fiber really looks good. Now Jet Seal 109 requires a 20 minute dry time. That's why I waited 20 minutes to buff off the jet seal. Okay, now that in that 20 minutes, the jet seal is using nanotechnology to bond to the paintwork, in this case, clear coat, and it's gonna create a solid bond that's going to last nine months to a year. Now, with the end, since it's the end of summer and fall's coming up, winter approaching, this is a perfect way to seal up your car before winter comes, because once winter comes, it's cold and you have salt on the road, you have heavy rain, debris, all that stuff that can ruin your beautiful color on your car. And now this beautiful carbon fiber just looks fantastic. We get a nice clean reflection. It just looks really good, I love it. Now we gotta do the last two parts. We gotta go here and bust, uh, buff off this mirror. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and buff off the top part of this door. And now, our Mitsubishi Evolution carbon fiber door just looks great. Feels smooth, it looks smooth, it has a high gloss finish, and we're gonna be insured that our carbon fiber is gonna be protected for a while. So if you have any more questions about detailing, polishing carbon fiber, or anything car care related, you can subscribe to all of our YouTube videos on this channel. You can check out our Facebook for awesome deals on any of our products, or you can find everything we use in this video on chemicalguys.com.